Good day guys, thanks for watching as always. Um, in this video we're doing uh, a foiling job on a GT stick bait. I've already made one side of the foil here as you can see. That's what we're aiming for. I'm just going to show you how to make that. Uh, and how to fit it to the lure. And we'll do a pull test as well. Now I got this stick bait in the mail from a good friend from Japan. Polonia would make stick bait. Absolute piece of art. And um, we're just going to do a, a foiling and a paint job on there. Now, as you may have seen, there's already some paint on there. That's just to give it the base color, but we'll uh, show you first how to do the foiling. Now, I've shown this before, but this is a bit of a bigger scale operation. Uh, so I want to show it to you in detail here. Um, we're starting off with some simple straight lines on a slight angle. Um, I'm using a piece of cardboard here. Uh, to determine uh, the lines. I don't like using anything else but cardboard because it doesn't actually scratch the foil. If you use like a ruler or something, it's usually made out of hard plastic and you scratch the foil and then you realize halfway that you have to start all over again on a new piece of foil. So that's a complete waste of time. Um, the best uh, space between the, the lines I've found is about three millimeters. Um, yes, you have to make a lot more lines over uh, over the same length of foil, but it uh, makes it look really neat, very detailed. Um, three mil is, in my opinion, uh, uh, the best uh, looking uh, scale pattern. Now here's to give you a bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. So all these lines are in the same direction. It's a bit of a thing that you have to practice. You have to take your time, you have to make sure that they're uh, all parallel. Um, otherwise it's going to look off. But here we'll speed it up a little bit because it's uh, pretty much pretty straightforward from there. Might have to speed it up a little bit more. There we go. If only it was that quick in real life, that'd be awesome. Be making many more stick baits, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Alright, so when that's all finished up, we're going to make the lateral line. Now the reason why we do that is so we can determine where our crossover pattern is going to be. We're only going to do the crossover pattern on the uh, top side of the uh, foil. So that gives us a good indicator. I did kind of mess up this lateral line because the tip of the knife is not as sharp as it's supposed to be. Uh, but anyway, it looks alright. So here we go and start the crossover. Now, what we'll do is we um, cut a line from the lateral line outwards, not towards the lateral line or over it. Um, we'll just go from there. That's the easiest way to work. By the way, the reason why we're doing this is because this stick bait is actually a prototype. Uh, there might be a couple more of them later on. We do do a pull test in this uh, video, so if you're interested in that, keep watching. It's not a bad stick bait. There'll have to be some adjustments, but definitely we'll catch some fish. Again, take your time, and if you get annoyed by the job, just uh, take a break because that's when you're going to mess up. And you only have one shot, one wrong cut, and it uh, might mess up the whole foiling job. Alright, let's speed this up. There you go. That's looking pretty good. Now this is where we align the two pieces of tape. Uh, that way we can um, just use a pair of scissors to um, cut it roughly in the shape that we want. That would be uh, beneficial to um, fitting it to the body. Again, take your time with this because you only get one shot. If the other one's off, you're going to notice that. Now we've already uh, cut a curve where the gills are going to be. 
now we're just cutting along the tape to create the right taper towards the tail. Make sure everything is aligned. This is one of those jobs you don't want to do too quick because it's uh, going to go uh, arse up. And what I haven't shown you in this part is how I um, make sure that it fits the body, but you want to take your time with that as well. Uh, just put the foil over the body, um, just draw some imaginary lines as to where the cut should be, and um, that should be easy enough. It's not rocket science. Here I look if I have to make any adjustments but that's looking pretty good now before I'm going to fit the foil onto the body I want to make sure that there's no uh, bumps or gaps uh, in the body because that will show through the foil uh, we want to have it as smooth as possible so I've just got some 320 grit here um, as you notice, there's some glitters in the paint that I uh, sprayed on the back. I don't want any glitters in there either because those might create little bumps and you'll definitely see that through the foil. So uh, take your time with that. Make sure everything is nice and smooth. Um, and that's where you can get going. ready to roll and fitting the tape to the body is uh, another job that you want to be very diligent with take your time make sure everything aligns and fitting the tape to the body is a very um, standard process as long as you get your steps right make sure that you align the tape first and then make sure that you stick the middle part of the tape on first um, if you're going to get any wrinkles it's not too bad as long as it's towards the outside of the tape I actually managed to completely smooth this thing out but if I wouldn't have it started sticking the tape on through the middle side uh, I would be running into a lot more uh, problems um, in relation to how many bumps there are in the tape so after I fit the middle part on first, uh, that's where you can slowly work towards the uh, outside edges of the tape. And then you can really make it fit. That's looking pretty good. Obviously do the same thing to the other side. And right here I've actually already cut out uh, two face pieces uh, without scaling anything is just an indication of where the eyes are going to be and kind of have uh, a shiny gill plate so these are the eyes I'm going to use um, my mate sent me uh, over, these over from Japan uh, these are vinyl stickers uh, these are custom made for the poppers and stick baits that he makes and that I help him make <laughs> So, uh, unfortunately, there wasn't any um, cut-out line uh, for the sticker, so I had to cut them out myself, but that's okay. Now, these eyes did look pretty standard, so I did want to give them a bit of extra flash. And the way that I did that is, I just got a, a hole punch, um, used the same uh, foil that I used for the scaling, and then got these... Uh, little shiny bits out that I can use on the 
sticker eye. Gives it just a little bit more detail, looks a little bit more professional. You'll see what I mean in a second. There we go. That looks a lot better. Pretty cool. Obviously the same thing for the other one. ready to roll all right now we're going to do a bit of spray painting over the foil before we put them in the epoxy uh, I just got those two glitter paints uh, and then we'll just do the epoxy I do like that glitter paint a lot because the um, coating that they're in the glitters that is, it's fairly thick so it um, does cover a bit of the ridge between the foil and the body which is pretty neat. Anyway, here it's out of the epoxy looking pretty good, pretty happy with it. Bit too many glitters for my liking but that's okay. We'll do less next time. Eyes look pretty neat in there as well. Definitely needs another coat of epoxy though, but oh well. So now it's time for the pool test. Now we don't want to use hooks because we don't want to damage the lure. So again, I've, um, I'm using these uh, old coat hangers that I've cut up. Make sure they're about the same weight as the treble hooks that I'd be using, plus the split rings. I can just coil these onto the hook hangers and uh, they'll be roughly the same weight between 16 and 20 grams is perfect so all right now I did have a bit of a problem with um, the hook hangers because the the coils actually got caught up didn't hang straight and I was trying to figure out why this lure didn't swim why it wasn't balanced well but it was actually because the hooks or the hook uh, hangers kept catching onto the uh, wire coils but once I uh, figured out how to prevent that, uh, I was able to get it to swim and I um, also got some underwater footage that really shows how she swims. It's a bit difficult to see from the top, but uh, well, we'll have a look at that in a second. Pretty nice sweeping action. Not too bad for a prototype. We'll have to be making some adjustments. But here's the underwater footage. Nice wide wiggle. We'll definitely catch some fish. And I like the fact that it can handle the heaviest of hooks. Not all stick baits can do that. As a matter of fact, I think this thing wouldn't swim as well. Uh, without heavy hooks, so. Doesn't fully sit with the tail down, but does have uh, it's about a fair bit in the water does rise nose up which is perfect yep 
Super nice wide wiggle. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. There'll be uh, plenty more videos to come. I tried to upload one video per week. Hopefully, I'll be able to continue to do that. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.